mysterious radio signal Proxima Centauri. Scientists have searched for alien life in outer space for decades, but recently they have found something unexpected. From the area assumed to be close to Proxima Centauri, the star closest to our Sun and in the Alpha Centauri solar system. Proxima is a red star that lies 4.2 light years away. Proxima is orbited by two known planets. Although they have yet to be properly analyzed, it's believed one could host life as it has a similarly rocky terrain to our own Earth. Australia's Parkes Observatory has been used to gain insight into Proxima Centauri. The radio signal, named BLC-1, was captured in the spring of 2019. Graduate student Sophia Sheikh, who is one of the signal's analysts, states, It's pretty expected that every now and then you'll see something weird. But this is interesting because it's something that's weird that we're having to think about the next steps. Sheikh and her team members theorize that the signal seems human but has been described by some scientists as a possible breakthrough in terms of alien investigation. A follow-up analysis of the signal is in the works, with researchers trying to investigate as much as they can to determine every crevice of what this could mean. The search for extraterrestrial intelligence is the astronomical project of searching the skies for signs of alien life and communication. The signal's appearance has placed a renewed interest in the investigation despite scientists warning the public and alien enthusiasts not to get too excited. It's otherwise known as Project Breakthrough Listen. Andrew Simeon, the project's primary investigator, has said, There's a lot of talk about sensationalism in SETI. The reason we're so excited about SETI and why we dedicate our careers to it is the same reason why the public gets so excited about it. It's aliens. It's awesome. The first alien communication project began in 1960 by Frank Drake with Project Ozma. Radio waves pass through space all the time, but it's thought that alien communication might resemble our own radio broadcasts or, as the BLC-1, be a radio signal of unusual means. This does mean, however, that aliens will likely communicate within limited frequencies that might be difficult for us to capture. Sheikh has stated, only human technology seems to produce signals like that. Our Wi-Fi, our cell towers, our GPS, our satellite radio. All of this looks exactly like the signals that we're searching for, which makes it very hard to tell if something is from space or from human-generated technology. It's possible that BLC-1 comes from an undiscovered natural satellite instead of from the planet. It could be a blip in the system or a mistake in our technology or a misinformed reading. Many things can interfere with the search for cosmic radio frequencies, so scientists need to figure out if this was truly an outer space signal or one of our own. Though, notably, it has passed many tests that rule out it being an Earth-based signal. The WOW signal from 1977 comes to mind. Extremely similar to BLC-1, the WOW signal was when intense radio waves were recorded by the Ohio State University Radio Observatory. The source of the WOW signal has never been detected and has not happened since, leaving yet another mystery in its wake. Shake confirms, Our algorithm is very optimistic about what might be alien technology. Unfortunately, when they checked Proxima Centauri again, they were unable to detect anything out of the norm. But astronomers are determined to keep searching both Proxima Centauri and surrounding planets and solar systems in hopes of tracking down the signal source. Enceladus may have ocean currents like we see around Antarctica. At first glance, pictures of Saturn's moon Enceladus reveals a topography not unlike a pile of wrinkled bedsheets. The icy white surface of the lunar satellite is unlike our own earthy one because of the apparent lack of pitted, mottled craters caused by passing space debris. Instead, Enceladus is crisscrossed with jagged wrinkle-like structures that reveal the icy landscape of the moon that harbors a similarity with our own home planet, a vast, salty ocean. Unlike our own seven seas, however, Enceladus has one globe-spanning and entirely subsurface ocean. Furthermore, this space ocean is warmer towards the core of the planet and colder near its surface as its temperature is regulated by the planet's icy surface. 
It is also far, far deeper than Earth's oceans, at over 30 kilometers deep as opposed to our three and a half kilometer deep seas. But while there are many differences, there are a few key similarities, among them their shared salinities and currents. Earthbound scientists have studied these currents in the only environment that most closely mimics Enceladus, that's Antarctica. Due to the large but rapidly declining polar ice caps that cover the southern ocean, the water temperatures are similarly regulated. The currents in Antarctica are largely caused by and manipulated by wind and lunar gravity, but they are also influenced by varying degrees of salinity, just as they are on Enceladus. These space currents are propelled around due to the changing levels of density, which are influenced by the amount of salt in the water. As salt water melts near Enceladus's north and south poles, the weight of the water changes and rises and falls accordingly, creating currents. So why are these temperatures and currents and varying levels of salinity on a distant Saturn-based moon so important? According to both the Jet Propulsion Laboratory and NASA, who jointly launched the Cassini space probe to study Enceladus, these oceanic similarities could be key to finding signs of life beyond Earth. The lunar ocean currents could distribute and maintain temperature and saline-based nutrient levels that are vital to sustaining life. Jupiter's Great Red Spot May Survive By Eating Smaller Storms Jupiter's famous Great Red Spot is undoubtedly the storm to end all storms. A massive anticyclonic high-pressure storm with swirling winds that rage at speeds over 400 km per hour, it holds the title of the largest storm so far discovered in the solar system. And recently, scientists realized that the key to its size may be none other than storm cannibalism of sorts. In the past few years, some thought that the Great Red Spot may have been well on the way towards running out of steam at long last, as it appeared as though it was slowly decreasing in size. Additionally, smaller anticyclones, which were smaller than the mega storm but still about half the size of Earth, kept running into the storm and it appeared that they were taking small bites out of the swirling clouds and further decreasing the size. Upon further study, researchers now believe that the opposite is true. Rather than shrinking the Great Red Spot, the smaller anticyclones were being consumed by the larger storm, resulting in the latter increasing its internal rotation velocity and further fueling the enormous swirling mass. Because anticyclones, like the Great Red Spot, are composed of high-powered winds churning around a central area of intense pressurized air, when the smaller anticyclones collide, the larger storm effectively steals their rotational wind and uses it as a power-up of sorts in order to increase its own wind speeds. This process is what caused the storm to appear to shrink, when it was simply absorbing the forces of the smaller storms to become even stronger. Once the energy has been absorbed from the storm collision, the Great Red Spot would return to its previous size. Essentially, although it appeared that the smaller storms, named flakes, because of the way that they appear to flake off parts of the cloud swirling over the Great Red Spot, appeared to be shrinking the size of the storm, the larger storm was feeding on the flakes to become even stronger. The process of absorbing the energy from the anticyclones made the clouds covering the Great Red Spot contract and shrink, making it seem as though the storm itself was growing smaller. However, the entire time that researchers were attempting to discover what was happening to Jupiter's famous spot and why it appeared as though it was running out of energy, the powerful vortex at the center of the storm underneath the clouds was becoming ever stronger as it powered the winds that swirl famously across Jupiter's surface. Although the shrinking size and the deceptive nature of the flakes made it seem as though the Great Red Spot was going to disappear forever, scientists were very quickly reminded that, when it comes to space, not everything is as it seems, as the famous Great Red Spot was simply becoming stronger than ever. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.